Oh, right. So, I haven't done one of these in a little while. Um, mostly because people haven't been posting any success on the boards with the ones that I have posted. So, I just kind of figure people aren't watching them. But I do want to correct some things in the mask versus mask match that um, I guess I didn't pay enough attention to. And this happens a lot when you're modding. Um, Sometimes you just overlook things, and you'll test it a certain way, and you'll think, oh, that works, I'm, I'm done, you know? But it turns out that you overlooked something. So in this case, I overlooked the fact that wrestlers will not attempt a pin if they... if you set the match to um, escape only. So we need to fix that, because, it, well, it will work if you're playing the match. It will not work if you're simming a match. And since I tend to sim mostly, um, you know, that's not going to work. But, you know, for the purpose of testing mods, I actually do play them a lot of the time, just so I can get to what I need to test quicker and I don't have to worry about, you know, random gen deciding that that's what it wants to do. So, um, Ace that runs the place had made... Uh, you know, he had done his whole thing and was testing it and realized that he couldn't get them to pin. And so my suggestion to him was, oh, well, put the move on a different move and it'll work fine. But that's kind of a half-assed solution. It's not really what you want to do. So what I decided to do was I'm going to go into this again and show you how to bypass the is effective fall method, which is what the, the computer AI uses to decide if it's going to try for a pin or not. So I thought that would be a more effective solution for this particular match. So the first thing you're going to want to do is we need to add a new field access, cl uh, field access clause to the beginning of your uh, match versus mask, match, uh, whatever you called your mask versus mask class. Mine is called mask versus mask.cs over here in the Solution Explorer. Um, so you're going to need to add a field access code, which will just be field access, and then parentheses class equals player controller AI, um, comma field equals plobj, or plobj, uh, comma group equals mask versus mask. And you do need to make sure that the capitals are Correct, so it's capital P in player, capital C in controller, and then AI is capitalized, and there is a an underscore between controller and AI, but not between player and controller. And for the PLOBJ, uh, it's a capital P and a capital O, so it's capital P, lowercase l, capital O, lowercase bj. And then for the group value, you just need to set it to the same as you've been setting it for everything else. It's fairly unimportant. It's mostly just for um, organization purposes. It won't affect the coding at all. So once you have that added in, then um, if you don't have the mod suite installed, you're going to have to go back and build this and then patch again with the new build so that that field will be accessible to you when you go to write this next bit of code. Uh, because if it's not accessible, you won't be able to do anything that you need to do with this. Um, so what you need to do is create a new method. Uh, it should be a public static bool, not a private bool. So create a public static bool method. I called my pin attempts OK. Um, you can call it whatever you want. But the arguments that you're going to need are player controller AI. Uh, you're going to need to call in that class. And I called my player controller AI AI. That's a standard that I use in all of my coding. Anytime I call in a player controller AI, it is named AI. It just makes it easy for me to remember what I've done. Uh, and then you're going to need to put an out um, a bool, uh, mine is named result, but it's going to need the out keyword um, because we're modifying the return up here in the hook flag. Um, so what's this, what that's going to allow us to do is bypass the, the uh, original code completely so it won't run at all and insert our own code. Um, but since the original code needed a bool, 
Um, it returned a bool when it ran. The original is effective fall. Um, we need to output a bool so that it can be returned by our new code. Um, so you're going to need to do that in your parameters up here as well, in your arguments for the method. You need out bool, and I called mine result. Um, so that made it easy. So then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bust out your handy dandy uh, IL spy here and find your player controller AI class. Mine is right here. And then you're going to scroll down and you're going to find is effective fall. And then you're going to copy everything between the two curly brackets. You don't need the curly brackets or the, um, the method definition up there. You just need everything in between the curly brackets, and you're going to copy that and then come back into your first blood class, or your first blood project here, um, with the mask versus mask match, and you're going to paste it in here. And once you do that, you should have, uh, I think it's three lines, that ends in a thing that says return match setting dot victory condition does not equal only give up and and match setting dot victory condition does not equal only escape which obviously you're going to want to get rid of so highlight the and and all the way down to the next and and but don't highlight that that the ending and 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 just delete it so the line should read read return match setting dot victory condition does not equal and remember does not equal is the exclamation point equal sign victory condition dot only give up and and ai dot plobj dot zone does not equal dot out of ring and and ai dot plobj dot has right and and plobj has right um so I'll kind of break down what that means. It means that if it's a submission-only match, it won't tr attempt to pin. We don't care since we've are since we're manually setting the victory condition to only escape. It will never be a, an only give up situation. So we don't. You can get rid of it if you want to or feel more comfortable with it, but we don't need to. It's not important. Um, so you can leave it in if you want. The and and is a boolean operator, which means and, but they. I don't know why Boolean operators require a double AND. I guess because AND is used for something else in C-sharp as well. So the double AND is the Boolean operator. So you always need to double up on your ANDs when you're writing a, a Boolean um, statement. So And then it checks for the zone that you are in, not your opponent, but the zone that, you're, that the wrestler performing the effective fall check is in, and it makes sure that it is not out of the ring, so you can only try to rip off an opponent's mask when you're in the ring, which makes sense since we don't want, you know, matches to end, you know, out in the, out in the corner of the arena where, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. So we don't want that. So only in the ring. And the... AI.plobj. has right and the regular plobj. has right means your, the wrestler doing the check is the legal man, and the wrestler having his mask ripped off is the legal man. So that way, um, they both need to be legal for for the match, uh, for anyone to even attempt to try to pull the mask off. So that's what we need. And then what you're going to do is change it from return. Uh, all of that stuff to result equals all of that stuff. So just change return to result equals uh, like this. And then underneath it, put in return true. And this return true is what makes the the patcher tell the game that you want to skip all of the code that comes after it. Anytime a, a method with the modify return um, flag set returns true it will skip everything underneath it so we don't that's what we want to do though in this case we want to s tell the game that if this condition is met the result condition is met that the fall is effective and to go ahead and attempt it and then return true to skip the default checks so that's what we do and then up here what you're going to want to do um is set up an if statement. I have an if else. You don't really need the else uh, because it's going to return from the if statement. I just did it. Um, 
out of habit, I think. So, but you can just stick with the this part, the part that I'm highlighting here. It will achieve the same thing. Essentially, it says that if that uh, remember the checkbox that you added on the form for the mask versus mask match? Well, if it's not checked, it sets result to false and returns false, which basically means that it will continue the, the default checks that the game has, which is what you want to do. So, you need to do if uh, exclamation point match selection form dot instance dot checkbox two dot checked, which means that if that checkbox is not checked, uh, return uh, result equals false return false, and so that will just boot us out of this code if it's not a mask versus mask match, and so that's pretty much all you need to do to get this up and working again. Um, it just was like I said, it's something I overlooked when I did my initial coding, and when I tested it, I tested it as a player, and I was like, oh good, it works. You know, when I finished the match, the mask came off, and I was like, oh awesome. So, but I didn't test it with AI, and the AI would never attempt to pull the mask off since we set the mask pull to be pinfalls. So, this fixes that. And that's pretty much all I needed to show you today. Um, I just wanted to come back and correct that one overlook that um, existed, and I'm going to work on some more tutorials at some point. Um, there's also apparently an issue with the alphabetized referee tutorial, the very first one I did, um, where it's causing some issues with workshop subscriptions. Um, so I recommend skipping that one if you haven't started these yet. Unfortunately, probably by the time you get to this one, you'll have already watched that one. Um, but um, I'm not really going to go into how to fix that, because messing with workshop stuff is a gigantic pain in the ass. I just recommend that you guys don't use it at this point. Um, I may fix it for the mod suite, and then I may not. I'm not really, I haven't really decided yet. I may just remove it. Like I said, messing with workshop stuff is a huge pain in the ass, and that's why, um, you know, it took so long for the mass deletion tool to come out, and why Freem didn't support any kind of delete or unsubscribe stuff in his in his save tool because it's a giant it's a huge pain and sh shuffling all of that stuff around is still um, you know very difficult to do so um, yeah I just I don't know whether I'm gonna bother with it or not it's not important enough to me to tool around with um, on that kind of level um, I was hoping it would be a super easy fix, but then somebody was like, well, my, why can't I edit a referee that was there? And then they discovered that it was set to um, be, that it was set to a workshop download because they had alphabetized them, but the um, the down, the workshop list didn't update properly. So, um, yeah. So again, if you are using alphabetized referees, you may have that problem. I'm sorry, I overlooked it. Again, this kind of thing is easy to do. Sometimes you think something works and there's some problem down the road that you never anticipated. Um, you know, it's just the nature of the beast. So, um, you know, don't get too attached to anything. If you start modding, you know, don't get too attached to anything because it may look like it works, but then, you know, a month and a half later, somebody's like, hey, this screwed something up, and you're like, oh, well, eh, I don't know if I want to fix that. So you might just have to remove it and stop supporting it entirely, you know? So, um, but anyway, so that was all I wanted to cover right now. Like I said, I may, I want to come back and do another tutorial um, about object manipulation in Unity. Uh, or in a Unity game where you just grab Unity components and you can alter their positions and all of that stuff. Um, but, um, you know, I don't have time for that right now, so I just wanted to jump on real quick and, and do this. Alright, well, thanks for watching, and I will be back sometime in the future with another tutorial.